This is the webcam that I'll be using for the Ender 3. As you can see, it has a 360-ish mount that will be very helpful to adjust the camera later on. It also comes with an audio and a USB cable. Once we take the mount off, we can see it has been connected with a tiny plastic mount and here is a better look of the camera clip. I have created a bracket in Fusion 360 with the same mount clip. You can see from the print that the bridging is still not good and I need to look for a better cooling duct. In this way we can still have the 360-ish functionality. I then screwed back the webcam to the mount and placed this on the Y carriage of the printer and in this way you don't need any screws or nuts to mount it and it's also a perfect length as it does not hit the webcam. All we need to do is plug in the audio and USB cable into the Raspberry Pi and we're all set. The next upgrade is a 24 volt LED light from IKEA and it's perfect for this upgrade. It also comes with two pins that were attached to this connector, but we will not be using that. I then cut the wire to length and stripped the ends to solder them later onto the USB mount. I have also made these two mounts for the lights and they can slide in the top X carriage of the printer. Here I'm taking out two heat shrink tubes and cutting them in half to attach them to the pins of the LED lights. Here is where I realized how smart I am. The heat shrink tubes were too small, so I had to bring out the bigger ones. This is the USB mount I'll be using to power the Raspberry Pi. Here are the two ends of the USB mount that will be connecting to the printer's power supply. I decided that I will solder the ends of the IKEA lights to the USB pins, which will allow me to not use any crimping tools or crimping leads, but that turned out to be a bad idea. Now this bracket is for the USB mount in which I'll be using this bearing. I had these bearings laying around so I wanted to make good use of them. The bearings go into the bracket which then slides into the printer's extrusion bars. Before I put in the bracket I made this insert which holds the USB mount using this o-ring. Honestly this wasn't necessary but I thought those bearings needed to go somewhere. Here I'm putting it all together. First goes in the o-ring mount holder, then the fastener that comes with the USB mount. Mm -hmm. 
Once it's all into place, I insert the O-ring into the bearings insert which allows for this rotation to reduce any stress on the part on the cables. But I forgot to print the version with the bracket, so I decided to make one with a tiny neodymium magnets. The nuts are pressed fit into the bracket. These brackets will hold a 5mm fan to cool the Raspberry Pi as I'm planning to keep it on for longer periods. So I thought this fan would be perfect for this upgrade and it fits exactly for this mount. Once I place the magnets under this case, it's time to put the LCD display and close the case with the original bolts. Now it's time to add the light mount to the top Y axis extrusion bar of the printer, then I add the next one. I arrange it all into place, put the bolts back on. Open the power supply by first undoing the two bolts that hold the unit in place. Then I unscrewed the cables into the power supply and it was this time that I realized that the end of the USB mount pins is too big. So I decided to go to the local hardware store and buy a bag of 4 connectors. I then unstripped the wires, put the connector on, crimped it in place and put it back into the power supply. I did the same thing for the ends of the USB light mount, cut off the end and stripped the ends. I then did the same thing for the end of the USB light mount. Cut off and stripped the ends and added a 2.5mm fork connector. Essentially this was a much better and safer method of connecting the LED lights. That being said, it's all done and there is no more space left on the power supply to add any additional wires. I'm not sure how it will work in terms of the load on the power supply but it is a mean well power supply 
but I'll check the current consumptions later on. Then I attach the power supply cover back on, then the two bolts that connect the power supply to the printer. Next is the USB mount bracket which I slid in place from the back of the printer and it sits just below the on and off switch of the printer. As you can see here it tilts back and forth allowing it to move freely and removes any stress from the plugged in USB. Is it over engineered? Is it too simple? I plug in a USB cable and plug the other Raspberry Pi, screwed in the two bolts. Now this is the moment of truth to find out that the whole thing blows up in smoke or if it works at all. Thankfully it all works fine and here is the result. All I need to do is create a case for the SKR 1.4 Turbo and my printer will be much more neat.